it's time for chapter 10. Pansy and the Promise, chapter 10. Skunk Lake and Mama Surprise. Papa and Mr. Morgan had decided to stay just a few days right here in the spot. Now that they knew the lake was just beyond the trees, it provided water for the horses and cooking, plus a chance to cool off in the middle of the day. The lake also gave the fathers a chance to do some fishing. When Papa mentioned fishing, Pansy's eyes lit up. She wanted to go, so it was promised that after chores were finished, she and Papa, along with Jenny and Mr. Morgan, would head to the lake to catch fish. Papa always carried a couple of cane poles in the wagon. They were set up with strings and a hook, ready to go to work at a moment's notice. Pansy could hardly wait, but of course, chores came first in the hunt house, even when on vacation. For Pansy, this meant helping Mama with breakfast and cleaning up the dishes. After breakfast, it was Pansy's job to feed all the animals. The horses were given oats from a large barrel attached to the back of the wagon. Each horse received a couple of scoops of oats. Then, while Papa led the horse down the lake to get a drink, Pansy would feed the chickens and, of course, Star. In about an hour, the chores were done, and Pansy scrambled into the wagon to retrieve the cane poles for fishing. The, see the scene at Jenny's wagon was almost the same, except Jenny's papa had a fancy fishing pole that looked very expensive. Together, the four of them headed to the lake, while the mothers pulled out two chairs and sat to visit while sewing and repairing clothes. In those days, most people repaired their clothes instead of buying new ones. The mothers found it relaxing to sit and visit while working with their hands. Pansy kept noticing how Mama and Mrs. Morgan were discussing something that seemed very important. They would laugh and then sounded very serious. They spoke in sort of hushed voices so they would not be heard. It was as though they were sharing big secrets. Whenever Pansy would come close and try to listen, it would always seem like the mothers would start talking about something else. Pansy wondered what was going on, but she never asked. Right now, she was too excited about fishing to think about it anymore. The lake was every bit as beautiful as it had been the evening before, but the faint smell of lingering skunk odor was still present near the place where Pansy and Jenny had jumped into the water. The four avoided that side of the lake and set up on the opposite end, where some rocks, jut some rocks jutted out over the water, making a prime location for sitting with their fishing poles. Papa had brought along a shovel to dig worms. The worms were used as bait to catch the fish. Pansy loved to watch as Papa's shovel would uncover a chunk of dirt, revealing the long, squirmy, snake-like creature. It was always amazing to Pansy that no matter where Papa put his shovel in the ground, there would be worms. Think about it, Jenny, Pansy said with a smile. There are worms just below our feet where we walk. Jenny was less enthusiastic about the worm part of this activity. Come on, Jenny, Pansy begged. Grab some worms. With that, Pansy stuck her fingers into the rich brown dirt and found the first wiggly worm as Papa sat a small can next to them. Into the can went the first worm. Your turn, Jenny, Pansy offered. Jenny had a bit of a frown on her face, but reluctantly reached into the dirt, filling around until her fingers uncovered the, the longish, reddish worm any of them had ever seen. When she grabbed it, the worm wiggled and twisted itself into the shape of a pretzel. Quickly, J Jenny dropped the cr creature into the can. The men laughed at the girls, and then they both dug into the dirt clots, finding worms and filling the can with enough worms for the morning's adventure. Before long, the worms were on the hooks, and the girls were sitting near enough to one another to visit, but not so close that their fishing lines would get tangled. The fathers walked down the bank, away from the girls, and fished around the lily pads. It wasn't long until Mr. Morgan caught his first fish. Excited! Everyone was excited to see him pull the fighting catfish from the watery hole. I gotcha, Mr. Morgan boasted with enthusiasm. The fish was placed in the bucket of water with a lid on the top to keep it from jumping out. Then everyone went back to their fishing poles, anticipating the next catch at any moment. The air was filled with excitement. However, after several minutes pa passed, there was not a single bite. 
The sun was rising. The air was getting warmer. The rocks the girls were sitting on were getting harder. Where are the fish? shouted Pansy to Papa. Papa's voice rang over the water. Just be patient. Pansy had heard that before after... Had heard that before... (laughs) Pansy had heard that before about being patient. She knew that was not a word she enjoyed. Pansy would rather do almost anything but wait. After an hour, Pansy left her post to go talk to Papa. Jenny and I are tired of fishing. We want to do something else. Oh, Pansy, Papa replied. You have to learn to persevere. What does that mean? asked Pansy. Don't give up so quickly. Good things come to those who wait, said Papa. None of this sounded very good to Pansy, but she reluctantly returned to her post, where she replaced the drowned worm with the new one, thinking maybe a new one, a new worm on her hook would interest the fish. Yet after many more minutes of fishing, no one was catching anything. Just as Pansy and Jenny were beginning to talk about asking if they could abandon the fishing adventure and go explore, they heard a loud buzzing sound behind them. They turned to see Mr. Morgan holding a very angry grasshopper between his thumbs and finger. He said, I found this guy in the weeds behind the place where we were standing. Sometimes if the fish aren't biting worms, it's because they want something different. With that, Mr. Morgan lifted Jenny's line out of the water. He removed the worm and stuck the hook through the grasshopper. Yuck! exclaimed Jenny. Try that, Jenny, said Mr. Morgan. Jenny tossed her line back into the water, and Mr. Morgan said to Pansy, I'll go find one for you. Jenny had hardly sat down on the rock when she felt a tug on the line. I've got one! I've got one! Pulling her line against the powerful tug of the fish was not easy. When the angry fish broke through the water, it sent waves in every direction, splashing with all of its might, trying to escape the hook, which was now firmly snagged into its mouth. Pull it up! Pull it in! shouted Mr. Morgan, who had returned when he heard the noise. In a moment, Jenny had landed the biggest fish she had ever seen. Papa and Mr. Morgan told them she caught a bass. It's a beautiful fish, said Papa. Mr. Morgan told Jenny how proud he was of her. With that, both men headed back to get more grasshoppers. It wasn't long before everyone had caught a fish, but Jenny's fish was the big catch of the day. The girls were so excited they wanted to go fishing, but Papa said, no, we only catch what we can eat today. We have no way of keeping more fish fresh, so it would be wrong to catch them if it was just for fun. Mr. Morgan agreed. With that, the four of them made the walk from the lake, which they now called Skunk Lake, to the camp where the mothers were sitting and visiting. It wasn't long until the smell of freshly fried fish was coming from Mama's stove, along with the smell of her freshly baked bread. Everyone loved the smell because it covered up the odor of Star, who was still tied to the back of the wagon. It was fall, and the sun would be setting earlier. When dinner was over, they would all be sitting by a crackling fire in the crisp fall air. Pansy loved those nights. Wow, said Mama. Fresh fish from Skunk Lake. That doesn't really sound too appetizing. I agree, chimed in Mrs. Morgan. Both women laughed as they served six plates filled with fish, potatoes, bread, and some canned sweet pickles Mrs. Morgan had stored in her wagon. As they, as they sat around, they, as they sat around the makeshift dinner table, everyone talked and laughed. Pansy told everyone, these fish sure did go after those grasshoppers. Papa spoke up and said, you know, Pansy, this reminds me of a story about your Aunt Virginia and the time the grasshopper went after her. Went after her? Both girls said in unison. How is that possible? Pansy asked. Oh, it's possible, agreed Mrs. Morgan. Grasshoppers can be very destructive. But they are so little, interrupted Jenny. What could they possibly do? They are little, but when millions of them show up, they are like an army, Papa said. Tell us the story, said the girls. I will, right after you do the dishes, said Papa. Oh, the girls moaned, and the rest of the family laughed. 
we will be waiting around the fire. The girls got the dishes done in record time, although after inspection by Mama, two of the pans had to be returned for further scrubbing. They washed their hands and settled down by the campfire to hear Papa's story. Papa had already explained to the Morgans about Aunt Virginia and how on this trip they had been telling Pansy the many stories of her life. The Morgans were very excited. The Morgans were just as excited as the girls to hear the story. Papa began. This happened many years after Aunt Virginia and her husband William had moved to Kansas to be farmers. There was a great drought that swept through part of the country. All the ponds and streams dried up, then all of the crops in the field dried up. This went on for three years until people were desperate. Farmers had borrowed money from the bank, expecting to sell their crops to pay it back. But there were no crops to sell. Everyone was starving and had no money. Even Aunt Virginia was in trouble. This is a good thing for you to remember, Pansy. Even though Virginia was a good and godly woman, that didn't guarantee hard times would come her way. Wouldn't come her way, stated Papa. Pansy spoke up. You mean like when their house burnt down? That's right. Being a Christian means you trust God to be with you in whatever life brings your way. Just when things seemed like they couldn't get any worse, here came the grasshoppers. There were millions of them eating everything in sight. So they ate her crops, asked Jenny. More than that, said Papa. The grasshoppers ate anything they could bite. They literally ate the entire back of the shirt of her young son, Homer, while he was wearing it, working in the fields. They couldn't get away from the grasshoppers. Some people were having problems because of the drought, so they sold their cows for a little bit of cash. But they never paid the bank, nor even talked to the banker who had loaned them the money. They had just used the money for themselves. Virginia bought cows and crops with the money she had borrowed from the bank. The cows were not ready to sell, as they needed to grow more, and the price of selling them at the market was almost nothing. Now, Pansy, here's where your Aunt Virginia was different from her neighbors. Instead of just selling those cows and keeping the money she owed at the bank, she went to the banker and explained what she had planned on doing. Her plan was to feed the cows a little bit of green corn she had harvested and prayed they would gain weight and grow strong on that green corn, even though all the experts said that they would probably die eating such young, unripe corn. Pansy asked Papa, what's green corn? Papa explained, green corn is the corn that's not ripened and turned yellow. It's too young to pick and won't taste very good to the e and the experts say that it would be harmful to feed to the cow. Papa went on. The banker who knew Virginia said, Mrs. Rule, you are the first person to come to me in the whole valley with a plan. I know you are pr a praying woman and I believe your pr plan will work. For many weeks, Virginia's son fed the green corn to those cows, and they continued to grow and become stronger and bigger. Finally, they were large enough to send to the market. By the time the price had increased so much that Virginia was able to pay the bank what she owed for them, plus enough for her family to live on. This was all because she trusted God and was honest to the banker while other people ran off in fear and did things which were dishonest, your Aunt Virginia was able to overcome the drought, the lower prices, and even the grasshoppers by trusting God to take care of her and always doing the right and honorable thing. Pansy spoke up. That reminds me of a story in the Bible when the three Hebrew children refused to eat from the king's table but ate only the food God told them to eat. After many days, because they obeyed God, they looked stronger and healthier than all the men who had ate the fancy food prepared in the king's palace. That's right, Pansy, you have a good memory for Bible stories, said Mrs. Morgan. I remember that one too, Jenny said. The names of the three Hebrew children were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's almost right, said Mr. Morgan. It's Shadrach, Meshach, and to bed you go. Oh, not already, the girls spoke in chorus. 
We have a big day tomorrow, Papa said. The girls jumped up and went to their wagons. The cool fall air was almost feeling like winter air that night. Pansy pulled the blankets up tight to her chin as Mama tucked her in for the night. Mama, Pansy spoke up, I've had so much fun with Jenny for the last few days, and now, pretty soon, she'll be going off in another direction. I'll probably never see Jenny again, complained Pansy. Mama stood by Pansy's bed and listened quietly to Pansy's heart. You really enjoyed having a sister for a few days, didn't you, Pansy? Yes, said Pansy in a quiet and sad voice. Well, Papa and I have a surprise for you. Pansy looked up, wondering. This day had more than enough surprises, but Pansy somehow felt what Mama was about to say was going to be really, really good. Pansy, I'm going to have a baby, and you're going to have a little brother or sister, said Mama. Really, Mama, are you sure? asked Pansy. Mama nodded joyfully. Yes, I hope it's a sister, Pansy stated with great enthusiasm. When will this happen? Oh, it won't be for a few months, said Mama. I hope we get back home before it happens, but if not, it'll be okay. Mama, Pansy asked as she was being tucked in for the night, what will we name the baby? Well, Pansy, we haven't thought of a boy's name yet, but if it's a girl, maybe we'll call her Bonita. The Spanish people who live all around us in New Mexico use the word, which means pretty or beautiful little one. I like it, said Pansy. We'll call her Bonita. Okay, but remember, it may be a boy, said Mama. Oh no, Mama, it can't be a boy, exclaimed Pansy. Why not, Pansy? asked Mama. Because I've been praying for a baby sister, said Pansy. Well, we'll see, Pansy. We'll see, commented Mama. Have a good night.